This is a message from an artist that I'm working with. It says, sounds incredible, brother. Never heard my voice sound like that. That makes me feel good. You want to feel good? Come on. Welcome to my pandemic haircut, or lack thereof. Hey, this is Steve in the Mix. I'm a multi-platinum producer and mixer, and I've got four steps that might help you to crisper vocals. And if you're an artist, producer, creative engineer, and you're putting stuff out, I've got nothing but respect for you. The four steps we're gonna look at are distortion, compression, EQ, and then what I think makes it smooth and easy, multi-band compression, and I'm gonna give you a fifth bonus step right at the end, so hang out. Let's do some vocal mixing with stock plugins. This is an artist called The Living. You can find him on all the digital sources. This is called Two Trips Around the Sun. So step one, just a little bit of gain and a little bit of drive, just a bit. You only want to hear it, so let me add that in. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. Let me turn it off. But somehow... Let me turn it on. We can't seem to meet up. You're probably going to have to listen to headphones, but you're just looking for just a little step two, compression. So here's the Logic Compressor. Here's the path, dynamics, compressor. Now I like to go to the Vintage FET. This is actually their version of an 1176. It's a really famous compressor. Now I do have a video about setting up a compressor. I'll put the little thing up here. I've already started working on this, so let's start. I put the, the ratio up to between three and four, so let's say about four. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages, but somehow. Let's get about five. Cars seem to meet up. Let's get about five dB of gain reduction. That's around this zone right here. Attack, if you go faster, the vocal's smoother, but the life tends to get sucked out of it a little bit, but it can work on slower songs if you want them to be really smooth. So let's listen to that and I'll back it off. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages, but somehow... So I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. And so listen for the vocal starts to feel a little bit firmer and closer. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages, but somehow... So I hope you can hear that. Put some headphones on. It's a little closer feeling, and it sizzles a little bit, and it just helps it come forward in the mix. The next thing, channel EQ. There's a lot of subjective stuff going on here. Start by adding a low cut. Also called a high pass because all the, all the high stuff gets through and the low stuff gets cut out. The typical place for this to be is about 80 hertz. Sometimes we can go a little higher than that without sacrificing. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages, but somehow... What we're trying to do is cut out the garbage that we don't need and if, if the microphone stand gets thumped, that'll start to go away. Dave Gonzato, who's a really famous mix engineer, has a really interesting video about where to put that low frequency. I'll put a little link to it up here. The next thing that I would want to do, this is a little trick. This low shelf right here, turn it on. Here it is. Now, the starting place could be anywhere really low. Move it up to 4,000. What that does is it creates a low shelf without affecting the high end. And the reason why I think this works and why it's a good idea is instead of cranking high end on a vocal, a lot of plugins, including the stock plugins and Logic, don't tend to sound really good when you add high end in an EQ that maybe doesn't have a great sounding top boost, this plugin. Let's listen to that. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages. But somehow... See how it sounds a little bit more expensive? Then the other problem area is, tends to be around 250 or 280. So I want to give you zones here. Muffly sounding tends to be in this area. If you turn on the analyzer, you can see where the waveforms are hitting. Those are the frequencies. 
We've been traveling through the ages, we've been... See how it's peaking in this zone? If we just duck that down a little bit, we'll get rid of some of the muffly sound. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages. Now, if you're getting something that sounds too middly or too radio-y, that tends to be around here. So that's this. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages. So if you want the vocals to sound a little warmer and a little more hi-fi, this can be an area. I don't think I have that problem with this vocal, but that's where you could go. And if you have harsh things, that can tend to be around 25 or 3. We could narrow up this EQ. Like this thing tends to be. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. So you can smooth out the vocal there. I don't like to get too in the weeds with the EQ if I can help it. If, if you got to do it, you do it. But this is maybe not a bad starting place. Let's go to four. And this is where I think you make your life a little bit easy. So instead of EQing, 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 it's hard. You see how these frequencies were moving around as he was singing? Let's pull that back up. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different... So as he's singing different notes, of course, those frequencies change. So here's what I suggest you do with the multipressor. Move the frequencies to 100, 1,000, and somewhere in the highs, I like 7,500 or so, so you've got high highs. Then, as it comes up, the ratio is about 2. That's pretty good. Uh, the attack time, 2 milliseconds. So just pull the threshold down until you get rid of the sounds that you don't like. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. But somehow... We can't seem to meet up. So maybe that's a bit too thin. We've got our own stories and they all end in a blaze of glory. If it's too harsh, pull this down. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing. That's killing it, right? But you get the idea. We've been traveling through the ages, we've been growing in different stages. And probably don't touch the high end. It follows the vocal around and it'll keep it even. That way, as the vocal changes, it sort of keeps the same shape. And if you play with those a little bit, I'm hopeful that you'll be able to find sort of a happy medium that sounds really good. You can hear now that the vocal sounds crisp and expensive compared to this. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. Let me turn them all on. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. So as needed, this is taking care of that. If you get this, then leave a comment. Yeah, Steve, I hear it. That way I'll know if I'm explaining it good enough. Now let me give you the fifth step. Now if you were going to go buy a plug-in, this doesn't come with logic. I think this is kind of the icing on the cake. Let's go to Waves, the CLA. We'll go Mono to Stereo. Turn the effects off for now. Turn this to Top. Leave this on Push. Double click that. Turn that to one. Listen to this. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. But somehow... Let me turn it off. We can't seem to meet up. And this compression is parallel. That's a key technique that mix engineers use. It's built into this. And so this fader here only turns up or down the parallel compression. It doesn't compress more or less. If you really want to put the vocal really firm at a tension, this is good for rap vocals. Put it on spank. We've been traveling through the ages. We've been growing in different stages. That really brings it forward. In this case, I don't think I would want the vocal to be that firm. So if you're thinking about a third-party plug-in, there's lots of good ones, but this is something for you to maybe consider. And maybe I'll suggest another perspective. Wayne.Wave has a video, I'll put the link up here. He's working in Pro Tools, which I also work in, but you know, here's some other stuff. I think it's a pretty good video. Maybe have a look if you're looking for some other ideas. So listen, that's the part you wanna hear. You deserve the truth, so I wanna tell you the truth. If you want your records to sound radio ready, and I'm so tired of people saying that, it's gonna take a while. 
You can do this. Honestly, you can. You can figure this out. But know that there's no plug-in, there's no magic preset that's going to work for you. So start implementing this, listen really carefully to what's happening, and you're going to get this.